Welcome back to Bear It In Mind. Previously, we've explored the divisions of the nervous system, and in this video on biopsychology, we're going to ask how the nervous system transmits signals round the body. In other words, how it communicates with itself. This is where neurons come in. Firstly, we're going to explore the structure and function of neurons, including sensory neurons, relay neurons, and motor neurons. Then secondly, we're going to explore synaptic transmission. Stick around to the end of the video, where there'll be some retrieval practice so that you can check your understanding of the material that we cover in this video. You'll also find linked below a free worksheet that goes with this video so that you can fill it in as you watch to help structure your notes. Your nervous system is thought to contain somewhere around 100 billion neurons, with your brain containing approximately 80% of them. Neurons enable communication within the nervous system, and these neurons transmit signals electrically and chemically. Within a neuron, signals are transmitted electrically, where the electrical signal starts at one end and travels along to the other end. You need to understand the parts of a neuron and their function. It's common to be given a diagram like like this in the exam and be asked to label it. The cell body. This includes a nucleus which contains the genetic material. Dendrites. These are branch-like structures that come out of the nerve cell to connect with other neurons. They receive information from other neurons and send nerve impulses towards the cell body. The axon. This carries nerve impulses away from the cell body and the length of axons varies from a few millimeters to over a meter in the spinal cord. The myelin sheath. This insulates and protects the axon and helps to speed up the electrical transmission along the axon. Nodes of Ranvier. These are the gaps in the myelin sheath that force the impulse to jump across the gaps along the axon. This helps increase the speed of the electrical impulse. Terminal buttons. At the end of the axon are terminal buttons that send impulses to the next neuron across the synapse. The synapse is the gap between one neuron and the next neuron. The terminal buttons contain tiny sacs containing chemicals called neurotransmitters. So information from one neuron is received by the dendrites, which sends the electrical signal along the axon to the terminal button. That's the basic structure of a neuron and how communication happens within a neuron. Now let's learn about the different type of neurons. And to help us understand that, we need to talk about receptors and effectors in the nervous system. Receptors are cells in the body that detect a change in the environment from a stimulus and produce electrical impulses in response. For example, our sense organs contain receptors that respond to a specific stimulus, such as our skin detecting temperature or our tongue detecting chemicals in the food we eat. When this change in the environment is detected, effectors produce a response. Effectors are an organ or cell that acts in response to a stimulus. Effectors are often muscles and glands. So effectors might be a muscle contracting to move an arm, or it might be a gland like the adrenal gland releasing a hormone like adrenaline into the blood. But how does this information from receptors who detect information from stimuli go to the effectors to bring about a response? This brings us to the reflex action. A reflex action is an automatic, involuntary response to a stimulus. Here's a quick example you've probably all experienced. There's a stimulus, so you touch a hot pan. Receptors in the skin detect a stimulus, the change in temperature. The effector produces a response, and the response would be your muscle contracts to move your hand away. And this is where the different types of neuron come in. You need to know the function of sensory relay and motor neurons. Sensory neurons typically look like this. Their function is to carry messages from your peripheral nervous system to your central nervous system. Motor neurons typically look like this. Their function is to carry nerve impulses from the central nervous system to effectors such as muscles and glands. Relay neurons typically look like this. Relay neurons are found in the brain and spinal cord, and relay neurons carry nerve impulses between neurons, connecting the sensory and motor neurons. So now let's come back to our example and input the different type of neurons that we've just learned about. So the stimulus is you touch a hot pan and receptors in the skin detect a stimulus, the change in temperature. A sensory neuron sends an electrical impulse to a relay neuron, which is located in the spinal cord of the central nervous system. Relay neurons connect sensory neurons to motor neurons. The motor neuron sends an electrical impulse to an effector. 
The effector produces a response, the response being your muscles contract to move your hand away. So that's neurons. Communication within a neuron is electrical. But what about between neurons? Between neurons, signals are transmitted chemically. This process is called synaptic transmission. Synaptic transmission is the process by which neighboring neurons communicate with each other by sending chemical messages across the gap. Neurons do not actually touch one another. Each neuron is separated from the next neuron by a tiny gap called the synapse. Synapses allow electrical messages to travel from one neuron to an adjacent neuron by transmitting signals chemically using neurotransmitters. Well, how does this happen? To explain this process, try remembering V-R-R-E-R-R-S. V for vesicles. When the impulse reaches the end of the axon, it arrives at the presynaptic terminal. Pre means before, so presynaptic means before the synapse. These are made up of small structures called vesicles and contain neurotransmitters. R for release. The electrical impulse that has travelled down the axon triggers the release of the neurotransmitters which then diffuse across the synapse, known as the synaptic cleft. R for receptors. And these neurotransmitters are received by receptors on the dendrites of the next neuron, specifically known as the postsynaptic receptor sites. Post meaning after, so postsynaptic equals after the synapse. The neurotransmitter is converted back into an electrical impulse and carries on down the axon of the neuron. E for enzymes. Enzymes are released to break down any neurotransmitters still in the synapse. R for reuptake. Also, some neurotransmitters go through a process called reuptake, where any excess neurotransmitters still there are reabsorbed back to the presynaptic terminal. R for replenished. Vesicles are replenished with new and reused neurotransmitters ready for the next impulse. So, okay so far, we're nearly there. Last bit and then we can test ourselves to help get this into our brains even more. So communication between neurons happens chemically. How do these chemicals influence whether the electrical signal gets passed on to the next neuron? That brings us to the S summation. Now whether the neuron fires and passes on the electrical impulse to the next neuron depends on whether the neurotransmitters that are received at the postsynaptic receptor site have either an excitatory or inhibitory effect on the next neuron. Excitation is when a neurotransmitter increases the positive charge of the postsynaptic neuron. This increases the likelihood that the neuron will fire and pass on the electrical impulse. Inhibition is when a neurotransmitter increases the negative charge of the postsynaptic neuron. This decreases the likelihood that the neuron will fire and pass on the electrical impulse. So some neurotransmitters can have an excitatory effect and some neurotransmitters can have an inhibitory effect. So what affects whether the neuron will fire and pass on the electrical impulse or not? The answer is summation. This basically means that the excitatory and inhibitory influences are summed or totaled. If the total effect on the postsynaptic neuron is inhibitory, i.e. negative in total, then the neuron is less likely to fire. If the total effect is excitatory, i.e. positive in total, the neuron will be more likely to fire. And breathe. That is synaptic transmission. Now it's time to check your understanding of what we've covered. I'm going to present one question at a time. You can pause the video to answer it yourself first and then press play again to reveal the answer.
Next, in the topic of biopsychology, we are going to take a look inside your head and explore what the different parts of your brain are thought to do. To watch that, you can click the video on the screen now or link below in the description. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.